This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and I am here with Mia Tyler, and we are at the kickoff party for Love Your Body Day. Yeah. Yeah. Mia, how did you get connected with this? Shanice contacted me through my MySpace and just asked me if I would MC it and host it, and of course I love my body, so I thought, why not? What do you feel is important about this event? I'm really an advocate for loving your body, and I'm not just about size. I mean, you can see that I'm tattooed, and it's not just about um, body size. It's about what you choose to do to your body and the fact that we own our own bodies and no one else can tell us how to live or what to do with our bodies as long as it's in a healthy range. And so I'm just kind of, I'm really a big advocate on loving your body no matter what. And so this, this event is very important and close to my heart. How do you feel that life for full-figured women has changed in the last five years? I've actually been out of the modeling industry for the past about four or five years, so I don't really know what's going on, but I just heard the other day that um, in New York, plus size models are now a size eight, and that is like, I can't even believe that, because I know, I think it was a size 12 when I started, and I know at that time, even real women in the world were like, you're not fat, you're not overweight, how can you represent a plus size woman? and so to be a size 8 I just think is absolutely ridiculous so I'm not sure what's going on in the world right now and I need to investigate a little more but it just seems like skinny models now are so skinny that they had to lower what plus size women are and I just I, I think that is ridiculous I grew up in a family where we were told to just love ourselves it had nothing to do with size or anything I mean it was just really about being an individual and you know I, I like to always say life isn't about finding yourself it's about creating yourself and who you want to be how do you take care of your body eating and health wise I'm actually really terrible because I just I um, you know there's that thing when you get into a new relationship and you start like eating and you're comfortable so I just got engaged and so we're just being really comfortable and now it's winter so we're like stocking up on you know the Trader Joe pizzas and I'm terrible I don't work out as, as much as I should I just bought some ridiculous video um, like for women burning women burn your fat zone or something and I haven't even touched it it's still in the plastic I'm terrible I don't take care of my body at all you don't do, no, do well, you walk or I try to eat three meals a day three full meals and two snacks because I know that's what works to maintain my weight um, we don't walk as much as we should my best friend and I we bought bikes this summer and never used them like it, we're always full of excuses it's just I think dieting and like I think that's a, a, a lifestyle and a way of life and we're totally just kind of like lazy and I think it's just because I don't care like I'm not I'm healthy I don't do anything I don't eat a lot of junk food so I know that I'm healthy so I don't really go out of my way to like exercise and diet which I should be but I'm not <laughs> you have a new man in your life I do tell me about him we met through a mutual friend uh -huh. and we've actually both been married before so we're both doing it again. We both thought we'd never do it again. And our both of our exes are friends. And he grew up with my ex. So it's just kind of a really weird small world. And I always believe that everything happened for a reason. And I know that whatever we went through in the past was to get to each other. And he's just, he's a sweetheart. He's, he's I, I've never had a, a man in my life that was my, my perfect partner, that we balance each other. It's always been, you know, 60-40, and so this is like perfect 50-50. What would you say to those who have problems with self-abuse? Um, because this is something you you struggled with early on. I do. I was, I was a cutter, and that's half the reason I started getting tattoos, was to cover my scars, because I used to be really ashamed of them, and now I, like I said, everything happens for a reason, and you go through, you have to know the pain to know the good, and vice versa, and... Um, you really have to kind of find it in yourself, get to the core of what it is that's making you harm yourself and it's, it's so hard for me to give advice on that because harming yourself, it almost makes you feel better and you really need to just realize that you're better than that, but you kind of have to hit rock bottom to get to that. I mean, I, I look at, at physical abuse towards yourself, it's just like, you know, being a junkie or being an alcoholic, it's the same thing. You cut yourself because it's like a drug and it feels good and it's a release. So you really have to find it in yourself and look at it almost like, you know, find your AA for your body. And I mean, that's I try to do that on, on my MySpace. Um, 
I really put myself out there and try to help people. I don't know if you've seen it, but yeah. And I just I really try to open myself up and I tell everybody all of my deepest secrets because I know I always felt alone in the world. Like I always felt like nobody felt the way I did. And so when I was cutting myself, I was the only person in the world. And then I actually came out about it, and then I put it out on my MySpace. And it's amazing how many people go through that stuff. And so I try to be, I try to be an ear. You know, I try to listen to what people say. And it's amazing how just people telling me their stories, they feel better about it. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm no Dr. Phil. I don't have all the answers, but I can only give my personal advice for what I went through. The first major step. My mom got sick from cancer and they gave her 18 months and I was like, what? 18 months, like, just to fathom the idea that your life can be taken and you have no say. I mean, your life is over and that was such a big eye opener for me. I mean, I never, I was living carefree. I was in New York City, I was running around, I was dating, I was doing whatever, drug, booze, anything. And all of a sudden I was like, you know what? It's, this life is too short. I want to be a mom someday. I want to be married. I don't want to be this hurt little girl anymore. And I just kind of, I gave myself that 18 months to heal myself and forgive her and forgive myself. And I don't want everyone to have to deal with something like a death or something so tragic. That's why I say you got to find it in yourself, whatever that is. And I hope it doesn't lead to, you know, someone dying for you to realize that your life is too short and too precious to be doing that and like it's not that I don't think about it I think about it all the time if I'm really sad or the first thing I think about is like oh if I just cut myself I'd feel much better but it wouldn't feel the same I mean I you know I had a relapse like about a year ago and it sucked because I was so mad that I did it it didn't feel the same uh-huh. I did it in a place that I never did it before and I was like why did I just do that like I had like almost two years of not doing that so, I don't know, it really depends on everybody, each person. You got great questions. Thanks. What have been some of the highlights of your film and TV work? As far as film goes, I, I hate acting. You do? I really hate it. Why? Um, I just feel really silly doing it. And I guess you have to be, you have to have a certain mind frame to get into character. And I always think I'm really silly. And um, I did Rush Hour 3, and that was fun because I got to be silly and be next to Chris Tucker. And that actually made me realize, well, hey, you know, this can be fun. I don't mind doing it. Um, I've got a couple of projects in the works. I'd much rather play, like, a dead body on CSI than, like, a deep, intense, like, acting role. Because I just, I don't know. I'd rather have fun with it. What are Mia Tyler's makeup must-haves? I need chapstick at all times. If I keep my lips wet, and that's it, that's all I need. I actually just wrote a book. Um, it should be coming out in spring of 08 or summer of 08 and it's about my childhood and a lot to do with my mom because we had a really bad relationship and I just wanted to write a book um, that showed there's a silver lining in every cloud and especially you, like I said before you have to know the bad to know the good and vice versa and I really had a crappy upbringing because of my mom and then something happened you know her death that really changed my life so it's kind of a memoirs, but it's also like a self-help. And then I add um, actual letters that I get from girls on MySpace. I just I love giving back, and you know all the work I do on my MySpace. I don't I don't get paid for that, and I don't ever want to. I love helping people. Ever since I quit modeling, I really love what I do on my MySpace. But you can't make a living off of that. So writing the book is my way of, of making some give, getting some back. Um, I don't know. I, I really want to do more events like Love Your Body Day where. I'd love to take it nationally, you know, do it for a month and take it to all the major cities because this is such an uplifting experience for a lot of women and um, I just want people to love themselves more because there's so much hurt in the world and, you know, I, I can't fix everybody and it really, at the end of the day, it kills me, but if I know that I help one person, then it makes me feel better and I can go to sleep better, so... I don't know what I want to do. I just, I want to help people. Your fans want to know what you're listening to because okay, they'll go out and see those bands. All That Remains because that's like absolute favorite. Lamb of God. Actually, that's my absolute favorite. Norma Jean, Atreyu, Thrice. I like to stay away from the emo stuff and I'm pretty goth, but I don't listen to like electronic. And I was just talking to my, my fiance about that tonight because he totally loves like industrial and I'm like oh how can you listen to that he's like I don't get you it's really heavy how could you not like it and I'm like no listen to Lamb of God that's heavy 
that speaks to me. Why don't you come out with your own fashion line? I want to actually. That would be you know awesome. It's, it's like I, I would love to do something where it's like size eight to eighteen. Or, so you're getting kind of the smaller sizes in there too, because there's a lot of young girls who are overweight and they fit into a size eight. So I don't want to leave anybody out, but I also want to do something where instead of just having like small, medium, and large shirts, length shirts, because I have large boobs and I can't wear a medium shirt because it will come up to my belly button. But if I get a large, it's I'm swimming in it. So I want to do like leg shirts. Like I, w I would love to do that. Well, with that, Mia Tyler, thank I'm you so that. much. It's okay. Nice thank, thank you so you. much for being on the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show. <laughs>
this hurt little girl anymore and I just kind of I gave myself that 18 months to heal myself and forgive her and forgive myself and I don't want everyone to have to deal with something like a death or something so tragic you, that's why I say you got to find it in yourself whatever that is and I hope it doesn't lead to you know someone dying for you to realize that your life is too short and too precious to be doing that and like it's not that I don't think about it I think about it all the time if I'm really sad or the first thing I think about is like oh if I just cut myself I'd feel much better but it wouldn't feel the same I mean I you know I had a relapse like about a year ago and it sucked because I was so mad that I did it it didn't feel the same uh-huh. I did it in a place that I never did it before and I was like why did I just do that like I had like almost two years of not doing that so I don't know it really depends on everybody each person you got great questions Thanks. What have been some of the highlights of your film and TV work? As far as film goes, I, I hate acting. You do? I really hate it. Why? And, um, I just feel really silly doing it. And I guess you have to be, you have to have a certain mind frame to get into character. And I always think I'm really silly. And um, I did Rush Hour 3, and that was fun because I got to be silly and be next to Chris Tucker. And that actually made me realize, well, hey, you know, this can be fun. I don't mind doing it. Um, I've got a couple projects in the works. I'd much rather play like a dead body on CSI than like a deep, intense like acting role because I just I don't know. Um, because this is something you you struggled with early on. I do. I was I was a cutter, and that's half the reason I started getting tattoos was to cover my scars because I used to be really ashamed of them, and now I, like I said, everything happens for a reason, and you go through. You have to know the pain to know the good, and vice versa, and. Um, you really have to kind of find it in yourself. Get to the core of what it is that's making you harm yourself. And it's, it's so hard for me to give advice on that because harming yourself, it almost makes you feel better. And you really need to just realize that you're better than that. But you kind of have to hit rock bottom to get to that. I mean, I, I look at, at physical abuse towards yourself. It's just like, you know, being a junkie or being an alcoholic, it's the same thing. You cut yourself because it's like a drug and it feels good and it's a release. So you really have to find it in yourself and look at it almost like, you know, find your AA for your body. And I mean, that's I try to do that on, on my MySpace. Um, I really put myself out there and try to help people. I don't know if you've seen it, but yeah. And I just, I really try to open myself up and I tell everybody all of my deepest secrets because I know I always felt alone in the world. Like, I always felt like nobody felt the way I did. And so when I was cutting myself, I was the only person in the world. And then I actually came out about it. And then I put it out on my MySpace. And it's amazing how many people go through that stuff. And so I try to be, I try to be an ear. You know, I try to listen to what people say. And it's amazing how just people telling me their stories, they feel better about it. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm no Dr. Phil. I don't have all the answers, but I can only give my personal advice for what I went through. The first major step. My mom got sick from cancer and they gave her 18 months and I was like, what? 18 months, like, just the fact yourself, it's about creating yourself and who you wanna be. How do you take care of your body? Eating and health-wise. I'm actually really terrible because I just, I, um, you know there's that thing when you get into a new relationship and you start like eating and you're comfortable, so. I just got engaged and so we're just being really comfortable and now it's winter so we're like stocking up on you know the Trader Joe pizzas and I'm terrible I don't work out as as much as I should I just bought some ridiculous video um, like for women burning women burn your fat zone or something and I haven't even touched it it's still in the plastic I'm terrible I don't take care of my body at all you don't do, no, do well, you walk or I try to eat three meals a day three full meals and two snacks because I know that's what works to maintain my weight um, we don't walk as much as we should. My best friend and I, we bought bikes this summer and never used them. Like, it, we're always full of excuses. It's just, I think dieting and like, I think that's a, a, a lifestyle and a way of life and we're totally just kind of like lazy. And I think it's just because I don't care. Like, I'm not, I'm healthy. I don't do anything. I don't eat a lot of junk food, so I know that I'm healthy. So I don't really go out of my way to like exercise and diet, which I should be but I'm not. <laughs> you have a new man in your life. I do. Tell me about him. We met through a mutual friend, uh-huh. and we've actually both been married before, so we're both doing it again. We both thought we'd never do it again, and our both of our exes are friends, and he grew up with my ex, so it's just kind of a really weird small world, and I always believe that everything happened for a reason, and I know that 
whatever we went through in the past was to get to each other and he's just he's a sweetheart he's he's I, I've never had a a man in my life that was my my perfect partner that we balance each other it's always been you know 60 40 or, and so this is like perfect 50 50 what would you say to those who have problems with self-abuse 